In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Facebook conversions API. Now, before we get into all of the step-by-step -step tutorial, let me quickly cover the Facebook conversions API in case that is something you're not familiar with. I would imagine most people are at this point, but it's always still worth covering. So Facebook conversions API, what it does is that it helps the Facebook pixels and your ad account communicate with your web server. Now, why is this important or beneficial? Well, it helps recuperate some of the lost data from the iOS updates from over the past couple of years. So if you're not aware, again, you probably are, but again, worth repeating, is that iOS users can now opt out of being tracked from your Facebook ads. If that happens, there is nothing you can do to get those people back. And that's one point I want to make very clear is that people think that when you enable the Facebook Converges API, you get all of those iPhone users back, but that's not true. They are opted out. There's nothing you can do to bring those people back into your Facebook ads data. However, you can bring people back that actually have been missing from your data for a while. So this includes people who have an ad blocker or are browsing on an incognito window. They've actually never been a part of your Facebook ads data. You probably just didn't even realize that was happening. But with the Facebook conversions API, since Facebook can get the data from your web server, it can actually get those people who do have some sort of ad blocker enabled or are browsing on an incognito window. So those are the people that you are recovering when you enable the Facebook conversions API. Again, you're not going to get 100% accurate data but you'll get better data than you were before. So in this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you three different implementations of the Facebook conversions API because every single website is different. So the step-by-step -step process will vary. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so first up, we have Kajabi. If you happen to have this platform, it's a very popular platform to not only host your website, but also host some courses as well. So with all of these implementations, no matter which platform you are on, it actually all starts with your pixel and grabbing what is known as your conversions API token. So what you want to do is go to over your pixel information. Again, this is all under events manager and then data sources right here. And then here's my pixel. I'm going to go on here to settings and I am going to scroll down here where it says conversions API. And I'm going to keep on going down, down, down until it says generate access token. So for a more customizable option, set up the conversions API and meta pixel via a direct integration. So I'm going to click on this button and it's going to generate generate what is a very long and ugly looking piece of code, but that is in fact the piece of code that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And it's actually really simple and straightforward in a platform like Kajabi. So once you are in the Kajabi portal, it's very easy and straightforward here. You're going to head on over to settings and then you're going to go to integrations and web hooks right there. And you are going to scroll down to where your pixel is. Pixel is already installed here. And my access token is actually already installed as well. So I'm not going to repaste it, but you literally just paste it in there and then you scroll down and you click save and that's all you have to do. All right, the next platform I'm going to show you where to do this on is on go high level. So here it is a little bit different. Um, so watch this step by step because there are some smaller nuances here. It's not as simple and straightforward as Kajabi was. So I'm going to go to my workflow list. This is under automations if you are on the go high level platform. So then I'm going to go to my new funnel right here. And so here is showing me my workflow for this new lead magnet that I have, which by the way, if you want to opt into this lead magnet, it's my Facebook ads checklist. You can go ahead and grab it in the description below. So here though, I want to add my Facebook Converges API. So this little plus sign here between the trigger and the tag and the email, I'm going to click on plus right there because I want to add another step right there. I'm just going to type in conversions and then the Facebook Converges API shows up. Perfect. So I need to paste in my access token right there. Awesome. I need to paste in my pixel ID. So let me go ahead and grab that. And then I need to specify the lead event, which in this case it is the, sorry, I need to specify the event name, which in this case is lead. And that is what I want. But if this was something different, like add to cart or payment, I would need to modify this, but this is a lead magnet. So I do want the lead event to be in there. I'm going to leave the value field blank. If this was a purchase, I would put the purchase value in there and I'm going to leave the currency at USD. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on save action. Beautiful. And now you can see that the Facebook conversions API is enabled. So once people, will submit the form. The Facebook conversions API 
AI is going to fire and it's going to send that data through my web server back to my pixel, thus enabling everything as it should be. All right. So for the last one, I'm going to go over here. This is going to be for a WordPress website. So obviously lots of people on WordPress. So in order to get this done, the easiest way possible to do it is through a plugin. I recommend doing a plugin called pixel your site. Um, so if we go over to plugins, if you just come into the search, sorry, add a new plugin. And right here you type in pixel. That's all you got to do. This one right here, pixel your site. There's a bunch of other options here. Pixel manager, pixel cat. I'm not saying those are bad, but just from implementation standpoint, specifically for the conversions API, I do think that pixel your site is the smartest one. Once it is enabled on your website, you're going to have a navigation menu, just like you see right here. So I'm going to go over to the dashboard and then I can do a bunch of other things, including stuff with Google analytics here, at least on the free version of it. But we're obviously working with Facebook. So I'm going to click on settings right here and then once again, I'm going to paste in my conversions. Oh, that's actually my pixel ID. Now I need to come back and re grab my access token. There it is. Paste it in there. And then I'm going to just go down to the bottom and hit save settings and voila, that's where it is. All right. So once your Facebook conversions API is installed, you need to make sure that it is firing correctly. So to do this, you want to go back to your events manager. So I'll show you what a proper um, e conversions API looks like. All right. So we're going to go back to your events manager. And this is what you want to be looking out for when you're seeing all of your events here, you want to take a look at the integration column. And if you just see browser, that means the conversions API is not firing for that event here. It's actually for submit application, which is fine. That's not something that is super important for this account in particular. But what we do want to be seeing for many of our other events is when it says multiple, because when it says multiple, it's as you can tell right here, it says it's being sent via the browser and conversions API. So what that means is that the pixel is getting data from the pixel itself and also the conversions API. So if we break this down a little bit more, particularly for the lead event, you can see here all the events that are Firing. And so the teal line are events that come from the server, um, AKA the conversions API. And then the events that are in blue are the ones from the browser, AKA just your standard regular pixel integration. So you can see right here, everything that's going on. And we also want to be seeing this right here. This is actually a really good example. Total events received from browsers, 12 total events uh, received from um, server is eight for a grand total of 20 events going on right there. And you know, it should be the case that your browser events are going to be higher than your conversion API events or your server events. In this case, what that means, these server events, those are the people that you would have lost because they either had an ad blocker enabled or they had, were browsing in an incognito window, but you're bringing those people back. So here's another example on this specific date, 38 people came from the browser, 11 people who previously we would not have any visibility to came from the server. And so now I'm capturing more data that way. So another thing to uh, look at actually is your event match quality right here. And so you can see the information information in terms of the quality that it's bringing in. It's really high for email, first name, last name. So that's something that you do want to be seeing. That's a positive thing. If these were low, like if, for example, the hash data for email was, you know, 50%, there'd be some sort of issue with the conversions API. And so that's something that you would simply just want to look into. All right. So there you have it. Three different implementations of the Facebook conversions API. However, you might be asking yourself, well, I don't have Kajabi. I don't have go high level. I don't have WordPress. Am I out of luck? Well, chances are, no, that's probably not the case, right? A lot of platforms out there still have a similar integration to the ones we covered. But at the end of the day, you're right. There are certain scenarios where depending on the platform you have, there might not be an automated integration. So what do you do in this scenario? Well, in that scenario, you still have hope. It's just a little bit more complicated and something way beyond the scope of this video. But just to kind of lead you in the right direction, you would have to use a tool called stape.io in conjunction with Google Tag Manager. And then those two things there together will be able to fire the conversion API for you. This is something that we have done for clients in the past, but I have someone else on my team do that who is way more tech savvy than I am. So that is not something that I'm able to cover in this video. But again, I want to point you in the general right direction in case you are in that scenario. Again, it would be a tool like stape.io in conjunction with Google Tag Manager. So that is all for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions about the Facebook conversions API, just let me know in the comments below. And real quick, before you switch this video away, I have a really exciting announcement. I am actually hosting my very 
very first YouTube live. It's happening on May 21st. And in that YouTube live, I am going to be giving feedback on your ads. That's right, your ads specifically. I wanna help you as much as possible. So I have a registration link for this below. Just enter your email and information, and then that'll redirect you to a form. And in that form, you can give me the information about your ad. And then if I have time, depending on how many people and submissions I get in that form, I might be reviewing your ad live on YouTube. So I'm very excited about this. My first time doing this. So I really hope you can join. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you next time.